Oh, hi, dear friends, cultural creatives and seekers everywhere. Bruce here. Today we have a very special program. Salvage hunters on the Titanic found an old movie camera, and the film inside was still pretty good because it was all sealed up. And they loaned it to me today so that we could see an original film from the Titanic. I have uh, no idea what this is all about, but uh, let's take a look. Well, I don't mind being rich, you know, because look at this ship. One of the biggest ships in the world, the unsinkable Titanic. What a luxury experience. And of course, being as rich as I am, this is what the joy of life is all about. Money, 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 money. You know, with all the money I have, I've never been on a ship because they're so damn dangerous. But this ship, this is what brought me out, the Titanic, the unsinkable ship. Oh, I feel so good. Oh, a starry night. Everything is so beautiful. Ah, oh, feel the breeze coming across. And to be so sure and so safe because nothing can go wrong with this. By God, what was that? Oh, I shouldn't be afraid. It's the Titanic, for God's sakes. This is the safest ship on the sea. Never, my good man. What has taken you so long with my champagne? Sir, I believe we just hit an iceberg. An iceberg? What are you, crazy? Where is this iceberg? Uh, sir, it's on the other side. The other behind you. Beh oh! Now Neville. Neville? Are you joshing me, Neville? What are you doing? Have you been drinking my champagne? I, I would never, sir. Well, let's have it now, my young man. Oh! Oh! Neville. I believe you've been nipping my champagne. I believe there's something wrong with the ship, sir. Nothing is wrong with the ship. This is the Titanic. Sir, I believe it'd be a wise precaution to stand next to the nearest lifeboat and perhaps get a life vest just in case. Never. Are you crazy? This is the Titanic. It's the most unsinkable ship ever made on the planet, for God's sakes. Now listen. Get me another champagne and clean up this mess, Neville. Right away, your lordship, right away. And please, no more drinking of my champagne. I won't, I promise. Ha, ha, ha. Then, Neville, boy, we cannot get fine help anymore. Got 1912, you think they'd be doing a lot better than that. No, oh, Neville, Neville, Neville. I wish you'd come back here and bring me my champagne. But, boy. It's just such a beautiful night. Wow, what a beautiful night to be sailing on the sea in the wonderful Titanic. I'm so lucky. To, actually, they refer to me as Sir Lucky Archibald. Ah, oh, it's so good to be rich. Wow, it's really interesting to see what Archibald is doing in this video. He's so convinced that the Titanic is unsinkable that even in the face of the accident and hitting the iceberg, that he is just disregarding everything. Why? Because in his mind, the Titanic is unsinkable, so it couldn't even come into his consciousness that it would sink. But this reminds me of an interesting story about a frog and a pot of water. If you have a boiling pot of water and you stick a frog in it, it will immediately jump out. But if you put a frog in a pot with cold water and then slowly raise the temperature, that the frog will never discern the differences as the temperature is getting hotter and hotter. And in fact, the frog will just sit there until the water boils and kills it. This story is very similar to what's happening in our world today. Human behavior is undermining the web of life and we're facing our own extinction. But the process is so slow that people haven't really recognized that the world is actually falling apart. Now we see chaos all over the world and blame it on things like social upheaval, economic upheaval, racial, religious strife. But the simple reality is there's an overriding problem and that is we are going extinct and it's time for us to wake up. Let's see what happens to Sir Archibald on the rest of this film. Oh, music, oh my goodness, this is the life, this is the life, look at me here on this masterful, unsinkable Titanic, and the band is playing on, oh, no, I'm so lucky, never, where is my champagne? <clears throat> Sir, forget the champagne, the ship is sinking. Oh, never, come on now, don't give me that trash, please. 
Have you been drinking again? Sir, no, I have not been drinking. Look around you, the ship is sinking. You really need to get a life vest. Can I direct you to a life vest, please? Haven't you understood? This is the Titanic, and the Titanic is a very unsinkable ship. You it's... really need to get to a lifeboat. Do you know where the life vests are? Can I direct you to a lifeboat? Life lifeboat, lifeboat. Come on, Neville, don't you understand? This is the safest ship on the ocean, the whole ocean. Suit yourself. I'm going to a lifeboat. I suggest you do the same. Uh, no champagne, Neville? Uh, no. Oh, come on, Neville. Wow, did you just understand what we saw in the video right now? It reminds me of an old saying that you can take a horse to water, but you can't make the horse drink the water. And in our story, Sir Archibald still in his mind has the idea that the ship is unsinkable even though it's all falling apart around him. The man offered him twice the opportunity for a life vest and a lifeboat. That's like offering him the water. Why is this so important for us at this moment is to recognize this. We know many people that are in a similar situation as Sir Archibald, whose life is facing some kind of threatening experience. And we wanna help them. That's a human behavior. Humanity is compassionate and we wanna help people. But just have to understand, people are also like Sir Archibald. They're not ready to be helped sometimes. They, they're not ready to listen to you. And you will make all your effort to help them, give them a better way of life and sort of save them from their own doom. And yet they reject it completely. And you have to recognize this because it's so disheartening for us to try to help somebody and then realize they never really listen to anything we're saying. You can only help people who are ready to be helped. People who are looking for another answer. The ones that will come to you and say, what should I do? What can I do? These people are open to hear another alternative story. But you can't convince people to take an alternative story when their belief system is locked in an old vision. Sir Archibald was offered the life jacket and an opportunity to go to lifeboats, but he totally ignored it because in his mind, he was still of the consciousness that the ship isn't sinking. And if you really understand what this means, it's the idea is the man was trying to help Sir Archibald and Sir Archibald wasn't ready to receive that help. And he came up twice, in fact, and look at the consequences. Well, let's look at the consequences of him rejecting the help. Let's see what happens now. The ship is sinking! The ship is sinking! How crazy am I to think this thing wouldn't sink? The ship is actually sinking! Oh my God! I'm here! Whoa! Whoa! Nemo! Nemo! Somebody! Somebody come and get me! Somebody is sinking! Mama! 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 Wow, what a horrible ending that was for Sir Archibald. Look at the situation. He finds himself essentially all alone as the ship is going down. There's nobody to help him. He has no recourse. He holds on as the ship goes underneath. The story of the Titanic is not an isolated event. There's no new stories. And in fact, what is relevant is the story of the Titanic is very similar to the story of what is happening to civilization today. Civilization is finding that the web of life will no longer support it. And the significance is then what are we going to do with this? Do you have a plan? This is not a chance event. This is a reality that we are facing. Do you have a plan B? As the civilization starts to collapse, do you have any way to support yourself and be able to thrive into the future? Unlike Archibald, who was denying the fact that the ship was going down, and more importantly, how he actually pushed people away that were trying to help them, we have to do another understanding about our survival, and that is this. In addition to food, water, medications that will keep us alive, one of the most important aspects of our survival is the nature of community. In community, people support and help each other. The most important insight to that is, for example, the story of dolphins. Dolphins aren't fish, dolphins are mammals. Dolphins have to breathe air. But if a dolphin gets sick and can't actually get up to the surface and breathe, other dolphins in the community will get underneath that dolphin lift it up to the surface so the sick one can breathe. And this will sustain the life of the sick one while it is healing. The question is this, do you have a support team? 
Evolution is not based on competition, as the Darwinian story says. Evolution is based on cooperation. Cooperation, by definition, represents the nature of community. But don't be like Sir Archibald. Make sure where your support is. Where is your life vest? Where is your lifeboat? It's the community around you. And this is an important part for you to become a participant in that community, not just to help others, but to receive the help from others. Community is a way to sustain us through this time of chaos. As civilization is finding the trouble it is in, can you make it through? Not necessarily alone, but with a community, you have a great opportunity to thrive into the future.